So the ABT speed mount has finally arrived. Now, we all know the speed booster, and in fact, this kind of just looks like they bought a whole bunch of DSMZ2 lens mounts and a bunch of speed boosters and just took out the glass and just machined the glass into the mount. Kidding. Uh, there's a second custom piece of glass behind it, as well as a custom OLPF to accommodate the invasive depth of the lens mount. It attaches easily to your red, just like any other mount, and the back focus is spot on from the jump. They've also added a couple finger panels on the locking nut to make it easier to couple and decouple. Okay, but nobody gives a shit about all that. Let's see how it performs. So for my tests, I used a Gemini with its naked sensor, which is basically the same size as the helium sensor, give or take a millimeter. Also, Sony FS5 with a speed booster to make it our full frame equivalent camera, and the helium with the speed mount. I put them all on the same tripod in sequence and did my best to keep the images close so they wouldn't be distracting. So. First, let's take a look at the field of view differences with the speed mount using DSLR zooms. I shot full format 8K so we could see how much it vignettes and fine tune the crop in post. Now, if you're a letterboxer like me, you only have to crop about 10%, but if you're using the full image like a communist, you have to crop around 20%, so you might as well just shoot 7K, since the one problem you will get when you shoot full format is that the black vignette in your image will actually throw off your histogram goalposts. Since it's pure black, you're always gonna get stoplights on your low end. So you have to be extra cognizant of your exposure, knowing that your histogram is being compromised. So here we'll cycle through the naked Gemini sensor at 24 millimeters and then the FS5 with full frame speed booster and then the helium with the speed mount. Now you can see right away that the speed mount field of view is actually noticeably wider. This means that even with that vignette crop, we're going beyond full frame. When you compare the naked Gemini sensor to the helium speed mount, you can see just how significant the enhancement is. Now, cine lenses read far differently than the DSLR zooms. Moving inside to a more controlled environment, here's the Gemini at full format, which isn't far off from the speed booster on the FS5, because that red Super 35 sensor is really more like an APS-H. But with the speed mount on the helium, we can see that there's hardly any vignetting, even at 8K full format. This isn't cropped in at all, and this means a significant increase in field of view. And if you compare the crops between the full frame speed booster and the slightly above 30 millimeter Gemini, the speed mount puts us way past 35 millimeter full frame territory. And now we're looking at something like 43 millimeters. We're in monstro territory. And with hardly any vignetting, it's usable. So comparing the naked red sensor to the speed mount, as we zoom out, you can see just how much extra real estate that speed mount gives you. Now, ABT will claim that they have full coverage at 7K, and that's safe. But as we can see, if you shoot at 8K, you can fine tune that crop based on the vignetting, which is variable depending on the lens and the aperture. And you can squeeze out a few extra pixels. But let's look at the actual sensor crop modes, and we'll see that 6K is what seems to match up the field view of the naked red sensor at full format. The alignment here is just a little off, uh, fuck you, but you can see the scale is about right, and you see the extra stop of light, too. This is rad. This means that if you don't feel like racking up 8K data rates all the time, you can lower your resolution on the helium and crop into the sensor without actually cropping into the image, because you're starting way past APS-H. You can have an 8K medium format mode, a 7K full frame mode, and a 6K APS-H crop mode all in the same camera. And for those who get frustrated with the crop mode on the helium for slow motion, now you can mitigate that loss in field of view as you drop down your resolution. You can see that a 50 now plays more like a 35, and a 35 plays more like a 24. It's quite a jump, and it offsets the sensor crops. So the question becomes sharpness. As you're punching in on the image, is it sharp enough with that extra bit of glass in between your lens and the sensor? So let's see. 
Punching in on the image, you can see a shallower depth of field, but at 400%, the image holds up quite nicely. And when you toggle between the two images, yeah, the shallower depth of field can make it seem a bit softer, but the detail is there if you look closely. So now, wide open at a 1.2, you do see some significant gooiness on the speed mount. It almost looks like a quarter pro mist, which actually isn't necessarily a bad thing, but this anomaly disappears right around a 2.0, and the details are quite sharp from there on. Now doing the sciencey bullshit, here's a chart. Uh, you can see the gooey flaring of the highlights and how they bleed over and kill your contrast. There even seems to be a green shift too. It's gross. The details were a little fuzzy. But at 2.0, all that goes away and it's nice and sharp and the edges aren't bad either. Now, comparing with the naked Gemini sensor, you can really see that nastiness when it's wide open. But again, as soon as you get to 2.0, it all goes away and they match. Now, looking at other lens characteristics, you get some interesting flaring with the speed mount. Let's look at how this thing performs in real-world environments. Shooting at 8K full format, you can see that there's a lot of character to this thing. It's kind of reminiscent of anamorphic glass. It's a little bit of distortion, different flaring. It's still plenty sharp, and there's lots of detail, and it's a red, so you're always getting that insane 16-bit color detail. But it's almost like the speed mount kind of dirties up the image just a tiny bit. And for those of us who use reds a lot, one of the things that we hate and love about the red is the image is kind of surreal. It's almost too clean sometimes. And so I sort of welcome something that gives it a bit of organic character. The speed mount seems to give the image a little more gravitas. And I really, really like it. It feels a bit less like an NFL music video, Michael Bay kind of camera, and more like a cinematic sort of P.T. Anderson and Chris Nolan kind of camera. I've always debated about getting anamorphics. They're so expensive. Uh, Fincher is my idol, and he hates anamorphics. He only shoots spherical, so that always kind of validated my adherence to spherical. But I love the character and imperfections that you get with anamorphic. 
Now the speed mount adds a little bit of character like that. It distorts the bokeh a little bit. It gives you interesting and more complex flaring. It's sexy. Uh, I, I sort of feel like I'm getting the best of both worlds. It's giving new character to my own lenses. But how does it look on humans in a narrative setting? Turns out, it looks rad. Uh, the lovely Julie Dawson looks stellar. This is shot mostly wide open, between a 1.2 and a 1.6. The depth of field is insanely shallow, but you can see that there's still good detail there. Kids, turn down the goddamn TV! So hopefully that helps you assess this little thing. You know, for those of us who came up on the Sonys, the Speed Booster was a game changer and a must have. And for the Helium, this is no different. The Speed Mount instantly turns the Helium into an insanely versatile beast. It helps give just that little extra bit of shallow depth of field that we all love on full frames. But it also gives you a little freedom from the intimidating shackles of 8K. Now, I don't mind it. I love 8K, but some people hate having to sell their kidneys for raids, but whatever, I don't drink, so I don't need my kidneys. Anyway, uh, I love the speed mount. Is it worth $4,500? Well, that's up to you. If you've invested in the Helium, what's another $4,500? And it instantly expands your capabilities with that camera. It takes you to Monstro territory without that heavy premium. If you own a Gemini, well, you're gonna have to crop to 4K. And 4K is still, you know, fine-ish, I guess. <laughs> We're so spoiled. But the Gemini has a low light mode, so that extra stop from the speed mount isn't as valuable as it is on a Helium. So really, if you're a Gemini owner, you're really only gonna wanna get the speed mount for the full frame aesthetic. So how much is that style worth to you? I'm leaving this thing on my Helium forever. It's rad. 